Welcome to the Freedom Project podcast. The Freedom Project exists to make freedom in Christ known to each and every person we can reach and to encourage and dialogue with those who have already found freedom in Christ. Your host is Joe Weaver. Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of the Freedom Project. So happy you could join us today. Please like, follow, share, tell your friends about us. If you have any questions or uh, concerns, please call, uh, get a hold of us in the comment section, and we'd be thrilled to interact with you. Uh, my name is Joe Weber. I'm happy to be here with you today, and I'm joined today once again by my friend, Pastor Mike Walker. Hi, Joe. It's welcome. Thank you for having me. I yeah, appreciate well, well, it. Well, you know, you're doing okay. We had you once, and then we had you back. <laughs> That's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, it is a good sign. Yeah. Uh, Mike, we, we heard a little bit about your life the last time you were here and a little bit about your ministry. And you mentioned uh, when you were here last time that as a part of your ongoing education when you did your MDiv, I think that uh, a large part of that had to do with biblical counseling and, and different types of counseling. I wanted to ask you today, uh, lots of people, and it's a tough world, lots of people are going through lots of issues. Um, how, how do people, I, mean, I don't know how to even put this, I know lots of people when they have a struggle in their lives, they get angry at God, um, which is kind of okay. David used to get angry at God and it's, uh, lots of the other people in the Bible. but. What's kind of been your experience with uh, people and how they deal with things as emotionally as they deal with issues, Bible? Yeah, that's a um, great question. I think uh, I could put it in this analogy that, because uh, I, uh, I work here in Ottawa uh, during the week, uh, maintenance, and at one of the embassies. And, uh, you know, so I'm in and out of crawl spaces, changing doors, uh, locks, moving stuff. Uh, um, a lot of our work at the embassy is uh, preventive maintenance. And, and of course, we're repairing things that break down as well and replacing things. And I, I kind of see how Christianity, Christians sometimes what they do, um, they wait too late mm -hmm. until something happens. And then they're searching and scrambling and trying to find something. Um, it's like our car, you know, maintenance for our car. Uh, often we, I, I'm the type of person that will wait until the, the light comes on, tells me I have, <laughs> I have like, you know, 20 kilometers no left. Oil left. <laughs> no. And my wife, uh, her, her, her dad taught her to fill up the tank at half, half tank. Well, about 25 years ago, pastoring, uh, when I was pastoring at the, the beginning years, um, I told the church members, I said, to be a member of this church, you have to run out of gas, because I run out of gas, you have to run out of gas, and that makes you an official uh, <laughs> member. Um, what happens, though, is uh, instead of maintaining their walk um, on an ongoing process, uh, what happens is sometimes they'll just let things go and they ride but they don't maintain anything. And then what happens is they get to the point where there's gonna be a crisis, there's gonna be an incident, there's gonna be issues that come, and they're going to come because we live in, we live in a world that's not ours. We live in, we live in a place that we're passing through. It's mm -hmm. not our home. And so we have, you know, you, we have the devil, we have the flesh, we have the world system, as our enemies, and uh, and we're our own best enemy at yes, best too, with sure. Adam's nature. But we also have Christ's nature, and so uh, dealing with those things and trying to bring people back on track to a place where um, they understand their position in Christ, who they are in Christ, mm -hmm. and begin that process, so that they can begin to grow in Him, and then they can mature in Him. And then uh, they can start experiencing the fruit of the Spirit, um, which is really amazing. And then, of course, you know, walking with Christ. And, and it's going to still be challenges. Mm -hmm. But with counseling, um, the type of counseling that I do is it's, it's an uh, exchange life counseling. That we can use all different words, abundant life, exchange life, uh, finished work life, uh, uh, counseling. Um, I use exchange life and it's exchanging back to the position that we are in Christ and maintaining that in mm -hmm. our lives. Um, but we have it, we have times when we don't check that light right? and then it's too late when it, well, we don't maintain the car so that the lights don't come on. 
And then when the lights come on, we're, we're in a panic mode. Right. You know, and then we pull over and we're looking for CAA, you know. Yeah. We don't want to be the, uh, the people that uh, are saying, God, if you get me out of this jam, I'm going to do this, this, and this. We want to be walking with the Lord on a regular basis and in touch with him so that we might not get into those jams in the first place. Right. Is what you're saying. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think one of the problems that can happen is with the clients is that they think that the counselor is going to get them out of the trouble or they're going to get out of their own problems, but they're not going to grow or get to know the Lord. And, and I'm not the source of their transformation, and I'm not the person that's going to get them out of their situation. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to teach them and train them on how to maintain that life with Christ right. and, and get through those things. And what do you say to people? I've, I've met lots of people in my walk who are, 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 are struggling and are obviously struggling, and you know that there's issues in their lives, but they resist the idea of, of counseling because they think, uh, you know, if I just pray and pray and pray, this will all go away. Mm-hmm. And there's truth in that. Yep. But how do you get through to a person who's so dead against counseling that type of biblical counseling right. don't see the value in it that that they maybe are missing an opportunity yeah. that's provided also by the Lord. I think uh, I think I think praying and and there's a there's a person I met at a, a group setting a men's group setting and um, I was listening to his his story and and it was pretty intense and his countenance was pretty rough. Mm-hmm. And in his story, his son was saying, "I will not come and meet with you. I will not." connect with you until you get counseling and so then he's like he's telling everybody at the table and no one knows my background and I didn't say anything I just was listening and praying for the guy and he says you know I, I looked into counseling it's $250 an hour and I'm like wow boy I'm in the wrong business anyway so uh, <laughs> um, we're going to maintenance I could do this for an hour but anyway um, so I, I talked to one of the leaders in that, in that men's meeting and then I, I really prayed about it for two weeks and I kept seeing him and I walked up to him, and I said, and I said hey, listen, I go, um, this is my background, it's no big deal. I go, it might not work, it might work. Um, but what I want to say, and, and to answer your question, is um, in that setting when he said that, you know, that he had to get counseling, someone in the group said, you don't need counseling, you just need the Word of God, you know? Yeah, and I agree, I, I love it, 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 but that's, that's, that's the what knife I, edge, right? Yeah, yeah. so I, I agree with that, and I also know that people need to be guided in that, you know, discipleship. You know, and that's what that's what a, that's what I would do as a counselor. I would just bring them to a place where they realize that their issues are um, they have no means. Oh, so they have to realize what they've been doing is they're accountable for it. Mm-hmm. Because when you get two couples, you get a couple together that um, they just keep pointing the finger. They, right. You, so the answer really is, you know, I I just need to pray about it. But if nothing's happening, it's probably because you need to die to it. You need to die to the situation and let God take over. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes we need that help. Now, that person that I talked to, I've, I've been seeing him every week for the last few months. And, I, and uh, he goes, hey, I'm going to call you, I'm going to call you. I go, no. I go, what you're getting here, what you're doing, because I'm watching his countenance change. Mm-hmm. And, his, and his fellowship around, and I happen to be at the same table often with him. And uh, at this men's group thing. And, and uh, also his son's starting to draw in. And I go, God's answering you. everything that you're doing. I would have told you to do, right? right? You right. know, so it's it is working. So yeah, prayer. I, I, do I need counselors? You know what? If you feel that way, and you can really, you know, as long as you're hidden in a church and you're getting taught, you're, you're getting great teaching from the pulpit, and you have access, and you and you're also practicing what you believe. That's maintaining it. Mm-hmm. You know. So Jesus is always the answer, mm. but sometimes we need help recognizing that path back to the Lord. Particularly Absolutely. if we, lots of people uh, get angry at the Lord, very angry at the Lord, particularly if they're, they're in a lost situation with grief. Uh, grief is a hard one to get by. Um, we had a woman on the program uh, right near the beginning of the Freedom Project who um, had a son that committed suicide. And uh, she worked through that uh, a wonderful Christian woman and, and that turned into a whole ministry for her um, is what are, what are some of the tougher things you think that Christians will come across in their path that keeps them from the freedom of Christ 
all issues are big when they're your issues, but uh, is there anything pre prevalent that really jumps out? And that keeps them from? Yeah. It's because one of the problems is when we have loss, we're trying to maintain what we had before the loss. And when you try to maintain what you've had before the loss, you will get frustrated. Uh, life changes, age, we, we change in age, we change jobs, we change, uh, you know, um, from the age of 50, we begin to go through a process of loss, mm -hmm. of losses, lost hair, lost teeth, lost, <laughs> you know, health issues, lost parents, we start losing our parents. Um, so we, that's, that's a normal, natural process mm -hmm. on earth here for us. And once we s understand that process, but the frustration is when they try to hold on to what they had. I met a woman years and years ago that lost a daughter, beautiful. Lo the the mo mom and daughter thing was the best you could ever seen. And this woman was told by the doctor after her daughter died from cancer that if you don't stop crying, you're gonna go blind because she was crying all the time and it broke our hearts and um, you know we ministered to her we shared with her and it was difficult for her mm -hmm. um, I think since my training with uh, Luther Rice University in Georgia which is actually an uh, alumni of, uh, of uh, Charles Stanley because we use his, mm -hmm. uh, his church as a uh, platform for graduation um, it was an eye-opener for me nine years ago. It really, because I'm an older pastor, I've been, th I've been in ministry now for over 35 years. And, um, and so the congregation's getting older. When we first came here, I was 29, and mm -hmm. we, were, you know, we were attacking everything and, and everyone. And, but now there's people in, and so now we're ministering to them, we're going through more funerals than I am weddings. And I think that's just the process. Right. But um, through that, um, one thing that happened with me was uh, what the, this, exactly one year later, uh, we lost our son. Hmm. And um, it was an, a, a fishing accident. Him and his best, best bud, both um, hyper, hypothermia, they drowned. So he was 31 with two sons. Mm -hmm. And the other, the other man had a girlfriend with a couple children. And it was really, uh, the, the training helped me to understand the grief process of everyone right. in the family. Mom grieves differently than dad. Mm -hmm. The twin brother grieves differently than the other siblings. And it was just a real interesting moment. Mm -hmm. And um, I, but I've been with people that called me up. I had kids that called me up and said, my dog just died and they're bawling their eyes out and you're, and you're ministering to them, right? you know? So loss is loss. You know? Loss is loss and I guess everyone deals differently yes. with grief and yeah. that's, that's part of the message. Yeah. Uh, and, and I guess, is, is, does it happen that that grief becomes kind of mixed in with anger and you can't even distinguish sure. where one begins and one ends anymore? Yeah, um, there's, there's like four or five, six, I mean, it depends on who you get the list from. There's so many different steps, stages. stages. Yeah. And then those stages aren't in order, hmm. you know? And yeah, there is those moments of just anger. And there's those moments of just laughter. And then there's moments of just total silence and hmm. quiet. Um, I was driving with my wife and, and I just started crying. And I didn't even know where I was. Like, I, I just started crying because I was so upset. I didn't even know where I was. I was driving. And I just forgot where I was. That's mm. how bad it was, you know. One thing that happened to me was I lost short-term memory for, mm -hmm. um, for a while. I just really, I, I was missing appointments. I never forgot anything. And uh, I had to write down everything. I had to put everything in my phone. Um, I have a good friend in Florida. His daughter was, uh, uh, she died at church. It was a accidental gun discharge from another room. In the church? In the church. Because a, a man was showing another man after church a gun that, that this guy wanted to buy. And it, was, it accidentally went off, went through a wall, hit a pipe, split three ways. One piece went through another wall and, and, and eventually killed her. And wow, the, guy that was, the guy that was looking at the gun was her fiance. It was just a really crazy story. Wow. And he lost the sense physically of uh, sweating. He just stopped sweating. Like it was really weird. Like so these a physical change. Physical manifestations yeah. from the grief. Is it? And it's, yeah. it's partly, I guess, maybe your brain is 
overwhelmed by the grief. tragedy. That's yeah. tragic. It's, it's, it's a trauma. Yes. it's a trauma that takes place. Yeah, I, and for me, it was the memory, and I was like, so I started. Uh, Working at the embassy, I had to memorize uh, 350 names for the mailroom when I was working back seven years ago, and um, and I was and I, I counted it as a blessing to regain that memory. Mm -hmm. um, the, and to bring back your, your point that you thought was uh, what you said about the lady that that uh, had a, a tragedy in her life and then she used it. Mm -hmm. That's that, that's a great prayer. Like God, how can you use this for your glory? That would be a prayer that's not easy to say, yeah. but you know Romans eight twenty eight and twenty nine is there for everything in all things. So it's, and it's together. finding the gift in the suffering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, and and you've been able to do that to a degree. I mean, and, and I, well, that's another question. And and these are this is a tough topic for you. I know that, but there's a lot of people in this same situation with you that might be tuning in. So so when there's no time limit on grief, right? I mean, no. Uh, does it's that a, ever? Does it ever? It doesn't really ever end. I suppose it just it took kinda, us about two, three years before we start really feeling the ground underneath mm -hmm. us, and that's normal. It's normal. But I'm not saying that it's going to take that long. I, the Chinese Bible study that I have, um, the church um, was the sweetest moment in my life. Mm -hmm. That kind of kept me together. You know, the word fellowship. Right. The church, the English church is great church, but the Chinese church was just a different group of people that just, you know, were very innocent about everything and mm -hmm. just, just, you know, just very kind. And, and the English church is too, but it was just a different. Um, do you, do yeah. you find that uh, this is something I've heard and I, and I don't have any experience in this type of grieving, but I've heard people say that uh, they find people treat them differently. And and some people that I've met were very, were really annoyed at that, and they didn't want it to be treated differently. And I think part of that is because we don't have this conversation with people with right. each other about grief, and sometimes the people who are not the grieving party just don't know how to relate. Right. Any advice for that kind of situation? Well, I have experience on that. I just yeah. um, I think it's a wonderful question. Um, um, I don't share this often. What I, I mean, what I'm doing now is more than I ever would have done. Share this with you about my son Craig. Well, in um, fact, you and I are friends, and we haven't spoken about this since it happened. Right. Yeah. And um, I don't share it with anyone hmm. unless it's um, I, I pick and choose. Right. It's like any testimony. We we can have a testimony in our pocket, but you know what? That testimony is going to change a little bit depending on who you're talking to. Right. And um, there was one woman in the uh, in the embassy one day, was really distraught. And I go, you know, how are you doing? What's going on? She goes, it's my son's birthday, but he died when he was 21 on a motorcycle accident. And I go, well, I, I, I understand. I I don't I understand how that feels because I and then we became friends mm -hmm. and then we began to exchange uh, the hope that we have in Christ. Amen. So um, it's it that that's when I shared it now. During the process, we had a lot of people that, you know, we had, it was, the church was overwhelmed. It was standing room only, outside only. It was crazy. Um, a lot of his friends, uh, a lot of our folks, because of mm -hmm. my investments. Um, I had one particular lady said something, and it was like, I, I don't know if I would have ever said that, you know, so it kind of annoyed me. But you know what? That's going to happen. And, and I think she meant well. And that's, that's, what, that's where I came down to. Mm -hmm. She meant well, you know. And I'm not even going to say what it is, but no. it's just one of those things that it sounded nice, but it wasn't, it wasn't appropriate. And, and I think that, that gets, you know, we're very raw. When you're, when you're in that situation, your, your soul mm -hmm. is raw, your emotions are raw. And so, yeah, people, people don't know how to deal with grief because they never dealt with it that way. And, and so someone might say, I don't know how you're going through that. Well, it's because God's given me the grace for it. Amen. Where Amen. you're not going through it, that's why you don't understand it. Mm. You know. So when I meet with people that I haven't gone through something, I don't try to understand it. You know, I just try to encourage them. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I don't try to identify with them. Um, and then at the same time, I if I do see someone or know someone in loss, I might share it with them. I might just have the compassion for them, and they might sense the fact that that same comfort that God has comforted me, now I can comfort you with it, mm. you know, as Paul tells us to do. And, yeah, and that's a, um, 
that's where we find the gift in the suffering, right? Mm. We, we take that experience as, as horrendous as it is, and we use that for the work of the Lord. Mm. And in that, find some comfort. Yeah, I mean, when his birthday comes up, or because he has a twin, mm. you know, so the twin was very quiet for years. Um, he's now starting to be a little bit more open for birthdays. But, you know, um, we don't even really talk about him too much to, uh, to him. Mm. You know, but I'll, we'll bring up a, a good memory. Yeah. You know, once it, and just short, and it's it. He doesn't comment. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. fine. You know, that's the way he's grieving. That's right? the way he's grieving. Yeah. So it's a great that we can have a conversation like this. And I'm really thank, thankful to you to uh, open up the way you have. I know it's difficult, and it, it will remain difficult, I expect, probably for the rest of your life. Um, until you see him again in glory, you know? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Mike, if you had, uh, we're going to wrap up here uh, in a minute or two, and uh, but I'd like to, to just give you a couple minutes to speak into the hearts of the people that are watching. If you have anything uh, that you'd like to share with them on any topic at all, please uh, just take a couple minutes and talk sure. to our viewers. All right. Well, if you are, as the subject today, if you are in a place in your life where you're dealing with loss, um, grief, and you just feel alone and you feel like God isn't there, He's there. And, you know, to tell you the truth, He, he understands what it means to lose a son because mm -hmm. He lost His son on the cross for a few hours. He turned His back on Him because of our sin. And so uh, He understands our pain and our sorrow. He, he suffered and, you know, He was tempted in all points like we are. I know it's, it's an interesting thing, but when you really look at the life of Christ in the Gospels and the stuff that He endured, the mocking and everything, um, and how he stood true, um, keeping his focus on his Father, and how we need to trust him, and that we have access to the Father through the Son. And without, without that, we have no hope, but with Christ, we have hope. And so call upon his name, trust in him, believe in him, and he will bring you to peace that will pass understanding. Believe me, I, I've seen that peace felt that peace, seen that peace deep within my very soul in the moment of that pain. And I even called out to God and said, you know what, God, I sense your peace and this pain. The pain is okay now because your peace is greater. So trust him. He's the God of all peace, and he will give you peace if you call upon his name. Amen. Amen. Mike, you know, I can't thank you enough for coming in and uh, uh you know, you, I know you're working in the city for a little while. Maybe we'll uh, make this a, a monthly event and we'll do a topical uh, subject each time. If you something you want to think about and talk about, pick something you're smart about, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're not too smart We're about. not too smart about. It's fine. And we'll learn together. <laughs> so thanks again for coming in. And, and thanks for talking about something so personal, you mm. know, because it's, it's sometimes, it, particularly as pastors, it's easy for us to tell other people to open up, but sometimes it's hard for us to do it. And we get healing in that, in that uh, conversation. So we just thank you again for coming by. Thank and you. thank you folks for being with us. If you have any questions about anything at all, please just send them in and we'll get back to you. And just remember uh, that this path to freedom comes by this relationship that you can have with Jesus. And it's just as simple as calling out to him. No bells, no whistles. We don't do smoke machines or anything like that. You just invite Jesus into your life, tell him you're a sinner, and ask him to forgive you. And he already has done that as soon as you ask. So remember that, and you can walk in freedom. And remember our scripture, John 8, 36, if the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. So be free, walk free, stay free. We love you all, and we'll see you next time for another episode of The Freedom Project.